For decades, Stephen Hawking has been recognized as being one of the most brilliant scientists in the world, and that is mainly through the reading of his books. However, his latest book entitled The Grand Design has caused many scientists and philosophers of science to shake their heads in disbelief. In this commentary, it will become evident why that is so. So let's start off with page 32 of his book, where he says the following, and I quote, It seems that we are no more than biological machines, and that free will is just an illusion. Unquote. Quote, For example, a study of patients undergoing awake brain surgery found that by electrically stimulating the appropriate regions of the brain, one could create in the patient the desire to move the hand, arm, or foot or to move the lips and talk. It is hard to imagine how free will can operate if our behavior is determined by physical law." Unquote. Well, Hawking's logic here is terribly flawed. It was the free will decision of the patient that allowed the doctors to operate on the patient in the first place. And it was the free will decision of the doctors to apply the electric stimulants to the regions of the brain. No physical law forced the doctors to do that. The physical laws allowed them to perform the operation, but the physical laws did not make the decisions to operate. So Hawking's argument fails. Let's go on to Hawking's next statement on page 34, where he says the following, and I quote, Do we really have reason to believe that objective reality exists? Unquote. And on page 42 he says no. So in effect, Hawkins says that you cannot know whether or not you are now watching this video and hearing me speak. It could just be an illusion. Do you think it's an illusion? And what's funny here is that statement of his is a philosophical statement. And yet in this very book, he claims that philosophy is dead. And his book has philosophical assertions all over the place. In Hawking's book, on page 51, he contrasts the young earth creationism and the Big Bang Theory. And Hawking claims that while the Big Bang Theory is more useful, he says, and I quote, neither model can be said to be more real than the other one, unquote. How many scientists do you think believe that today? On page 9, Hawking writes, multiple universes arise naturally from physical laws, unquote. There is absolutely no evidence at all for the existence of multiple universes. And I defy anybody to show me scientific evidence to the contrary. On page 180, Hawkins concludes, and I quote, Because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing, unquote. Well, there are at least three problems with this assertion. Number one is that it's illogical. If we say X creates Y, it is perfectly logical to assume that X pre-existed in order to create Y. But to say that X created X is an incoherent argument. For how can X pre-exist in order to create X which didn't exist? Secondly, nothing can come from nothing. Gravity itself is not nothing. And gravity needs matter to create anything. Where did the matter come from? And if Hawking is referring to quantum vacuums and fluctuations, they are not nothing either, as has been pointed out by Lawrence Krauss and David Albert, both eminent physicists, and by the way, also both are atheists. And thirdly, gravity, which is a law of nature, presupposes that nature itself exists. So what created nature? In closing, it should be asked, does Hawking really believe this stuff? Or maybe it's a case of him having been enticed by the book publishers to include provocative statements in order to sell more books. Whatever the case may be, I believe thinking people would agree with what Oxford University professor John Lennox had to say when he said the following, and I quote, Nonsense remains nonsense, even when it's taught by world-famous scientists, unquote. The only positive thing that one can get from reading this book is that the authors affirm 
and argue for the facts of an absolute beginning of time and the universe. And they argue for the fine-tuning of the universe for intelligent life. And finally, contrary to what Hawking believes, the grand design of the universe had a grand designer. The best evidence for that is our fine-tuned universe, which Hawking went into great detail to explain how fine-tuned it is. Thank you.